the Gospel of the Lord. Happy Mother's Day to each and every mother. We have a special blessing for all your mothers. And this year, we have the blessing online. A special moment for you to receive the blessing online after this Mass. We have a mother and because of a mother, I am here, you are here, right? I'm sure you know that. Thank God for your own mother. And during this pandemic crisis, Jesus has a word for a mom. Jesus has a word for a mother, every mother. And he has a word for each and every one of us. And these words are very, very meaningful for each and every one which we heard today in the gospel. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. These are the words of Jesus Christ. And therefore, these words should give us that consolation and strength that we are in the safe hands of Jesus Christ. Well, speaking about mothers, I always say I have three mothers. I have three mothers. The first mother is my own mother who brought me into this world. And the second mother is my mother church, where I am able to exercise my faith. And as a priest, where I am able to exercise my ministry, my mother church. And third is Mother Mary, Mother of God, who becomes also my mother for my spiritual strength and protection. Do something nice for your mother today and keep her happy. And if your mother is gone away from this world and she is in heaven, pray for her soul. This much we can do for sure. And that is why once in a year at least we remember our mother who came into this world. But today, the doubting Thomas and the inquisitive Philip provoked Jesus Christ in a way for Jesus Christ to say, I am the way, the truth and the life. And these nine words that Jesus Christ says, I am the way, I am the truth and I am the life is unarguable because these very words are so important and very wisely the wisdom has spoken and for the past maybe more than 7,000 years no one has spoken these words which are recorded for each one of us to know that Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth, Jesus is the light. For him to say, I am. Well, we see so many religions in the world. The various religions in the world who claim that they had found the way. Various religions in the world, they have found the way. But here we have Jesus who says, I am the way. That is the greatest gift that we have. Various religions in the world, who claim that they say that through them, the final truth has been communicated to the world. So they have, through them, communicated the truth to the whole world. But here Jesus Christ says, I am the truth. So beautiful that you belong to that truth. The various religions in the world who say that through them, they have come to receive and have discovered a new way of life. A new uplifting way of life. A new natural way of life. They all say they have discovered a life. But here Jesus Christ says, I am the life. Therefore, these very words, when Jesus says, 
that he is the way, the truth, and the life, we find it that Jesus, in a way, has made his followers not to be forced into the way, the truth, and the life, but to accept with freedom. Clearly shows that this is what Jesus wants. If you want to be his follower, accept him as the way, as the truth, as the life. It's your choice. And each one of us have accepted him. And that is why we also say he is our way, our truth and the life. So we either are with Jesus or against Jesus. Because if we are with Jesus, he is our way, our truth and the life. Or if we are against Jesus, we will say, no, this is not my way of life. These very words, I am the way, the truth and the life, rang like a loud bell in the ears of Thomas, Philip and the others. And it is still ringing, even in the 21st century, those words in our ears, I am the way, the truth and the life. Well, in the 15th century, uh, Thomas Kempis, a great uh, spiritual leader, who could really give us that beautiful book, Imitation of Christ, he says very beautifully, without the way, there is no going. Without the truth, there is no knowing. Without the life, there is no living. Therefore, we find a lot of meaning when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. And note that Jesus, our master, did not say, be careful about this, did not say, I am a way. No. Did not say, I am a kind of form of truth. He did not say, I am a, a kind of way of life. He says, I am. I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. This is the ultimate. Therefore, if you go into the Psalms, Psalm 86 very clearly says that, Teach me the way, Lord, so that I may walk in your truth for my life. So that Psalm confirms what Jesus wants to tell us by his very words. Now, I also like to come to the aspect of the first reading. Why? Because the first reading is also very important for us. We see in the first reading which we heard from the Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles is the beginning of the church. In a way, the church which Jesus Christ instituted. And that church began. And we heard in today's first reading, the number of members increased in large numbers. So there has been right from the beginning of the church, growth. And where there is growth, you find that the apostles were working. One beautiful thing that we see is, the church was growing. And you and I are proud that we have come into the church that is growing. It is also important to see that we should be aware and be very attentive to see what makes the church grow and learn those steps. We should also be aware of the church that is declining, that is diminishing, so that we learn what are the blocks of that growth. What are the hindrances of that growth? When Peter stands up and says these words, he knows that the apostles were growing. Well, when the church begins, we know that members come in. Well, when there are human beings, there will always be a conflict. When there are human beings, very sad, no? When the human beings come, there is always conflict. And the early church had conflicts. That is why the Hellenistic come and they say, this is our teaching, this is what you are. They were jealous about the number increasing. And we are seeing they are all accepting Christ 
the risen Lord. And therefore, you will find conflict in the church always. Because human beings are there in the church. And don't be disturbed or, or totally say, no, I don't like this church. If there is that conflict, that means the church is growing. All that you have to do is be aware if your church is growing. Be aware what are the hindrances that your church is declining. I also take you to the second reading where Peter presents to us the priests. He says they laid hands on them and they blessed them and they all went and did ministry. In other words, we see very clearly in the second reading that group consists in all the faithful. In the reading from St. Peter, we heard that all who are committed to Christ are de facto priests. All who are committed to Christ are de facto priests. I am in persona. You are in de facto priests and that is the reason why the first Pope, Peter, claims and proclaims saying, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that they might announce the praise of him who called you out of darkness into this wonderful light. Therefore, you are the common priesthood, I am an anointed priesthood, and we form that belongingness into that wonderful light of Christ. Finally, I like to give you those words of consolation which Jesus says in today's gospel reading. In the beginning itself, he says, in my father's house, there are a lot of rooms. Are you happy about it? There are a lot of rooms in my father's house. If not, I would have not said I'm going to prepare a, a room for you. He says very clearly, in my father's house, there are many dwellings. And the gospel begins with this. And I choose to close my sermon with these same words. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. There is a room in your name. There is a room in my name. These rooms are there waiting for us to move into it. And that is why Jesus says, I have prepared rooms for you. I have prepared rooms for you. Now, the ball is in our court. I have to prepare myself to move into that room which Jesus has prepared. Amen. Let us all stand for the creed. Let us all together say,